This video will step through how to secure FME server on Windows operating system with HTTPS using a PFX file. Let's check a few things before beginning. Check the files your IT department or certificate authority has provided you and confirm you have a file ending with the PFX extension. If your files instead end with CER or CRT, please view the video Configure FME Server HTTPS with a CA cert linked in the description. If you have both types of files, continue watching since using a PFX file is the most simple way to configure HTTPS on FME Server. The PFX file contains any root and intermediate certificates, as well as both the private and public key, so it can simply be referenced in FME Server's configuration without needing to create a new key store and import certificates. Let's begin. Again, these steps and the XML snippets used are documented in the FME community article linked in this video's description. Make a backup of the Tomcat XML configuration files. Go to your FME server installation directory and then utilities tomcat conf and make backups of server XML, web XML and context XML. It's helpful to have a copy of these files in case you encounter any problems so you can reverse the changes. First, let's configure the server XML file. Open a text editor as an administrator. You can use Notepad, but a text editor that supports syntax highlighting will make the file easier to edit and help prevent mistakes. In this case, we're using Notepad++, which is available for free. Open server XML located in the comp folder. Locate the SSL engine setting in the listener element that contains class name, org, Apache, Catalina, core, APR, lifecycle listener. Verify the value is off. Next, locate the connector element that contains protocol, org, Apache, Coyote, HTTP 11, HTTP 11, NIO protocol. Replace the entire element with the XML snippet in the community article. We recommend storing your PFX file in FME server's Tomcat folder. Please note that when you upgrade FME Server, the PFX file will be removed, so make sure to manually take a backup or obtain a new PFX file when upgrading. Replace the key store file value with the path to your PFX certificate. Make sure the key store pass is set to the password for your PFX certificate file. Note that if the password contains XML characters, these should be replaced with escape characters. You can disable TLS 1.1 by removing the reference from SSL enabled protocols. The list of ciphers is not exhaustive. If your certificate was generated with a different algorithm, it must be added to the list. Any algorithms not in use can also be safely removed from this list. The community article contains a link to a full list of ciphers supported by Tomcat. The XML snippet uses port 443. To change the port for HTTPS communication, change 443 to the desired port for both the port and redirect port directives. Note that if using a port other than the default port 443, you'll need to specify that port in the web URL when accessing FME server. Save and close the server XML file. Next, let's configure WebXML. Open WebXML located in the conf folder. Add the XML snippet from the community article just before the closing web app element. Save and close WebXML. 
Finally, we'll configure context XML. Open context XML located in the comp folder. Copy and paste the XML snippet from the community article just before the closing context element. Save and close context XML. Next, we need to update the FME server web URL to use HTTPS. Run a text editor as an administrator and open FME server config.txt, which is located in the FME server installation directory in the server folder. Update the FME server web URL by changing HTTP to HTTPS and change the port number to the same one specified in server XML. By default, 443. Save and close the file. Let's verify the HTTPS configuration. Restart FME server. Simple way to do this is by running the restart FME server script included with FME server. FME server will take a few minutes to restart. Once the server has restarted, go to your FME server URL. If you configure Tomcat to use a port other than the standard port, you will need to specify the port after the URL. You should now see the FME server login page in a secured format. Note that your FME server URL must include the domain that the certificate was issued for, or else your website will still show not secure. Log in to FME Server. To be able to submit jobs on FME Server via HTTPS, we have to update the service URLs. Open the Services page under Admin, System Configuration, Network, and Email. Click Change All Hosts, and in the URL Pattern field, change HTTP to HTTPS. FME Server may already pick up this change, in which case you can just select OK. If required, also modify the port number. Notice that the service URLs have been updated for HTTPS. Note that if any service URLs have been manually modified in the past, change all hosts will not update them. You'll need to manually modify the URL. Let's run a sample workspace to confirm everything's working. The workspace completed successfully. Your FME server is now configured to work with HTTPS. If the job fails or you encounter other issues, please see our HTTPS troubleshooting guide linked in the video description. If your FME server is configured to use single sign-on, you'll need to update the SSO authentication URL to use HTTPS. The setting is in a properties file located in your FME server installation folder under Utilities, Tomcat, Web Apps, FME Server, WebINF, Conf. Run a text editor as an administrator and open the properties file. Locate the single sign-on auth URL parameter and update it to use HTTPS and the port number you chose in your server XML file. By default, port 443. Save and close the file. If you plan to use the WebSocket server that's included with FME Server, please see the community article for steps on how to configure it for HTTPS. 
Thanks for watching.